Lindy, what? You, your character has a bunch of sisters. Do you remember the name of the one that is into the Temple Hill Slasher? No, there's Eleanor, Elizabeth. Welcome to Hell's Rebels, episode 45. Oh, wow. The group... We're almost done with book five. The group had just um, done a bunch of stuff in the Feywild. And uh, they were in the city of Vire, which is the city of masks. So you had just taken care of a problem and you fought a bunch of tooth fairies. Oh, thank you for hosting. And, uh... Let's see. I have some notes here, and I don't know if they're current. But I think I asked you if there's anything else you wanted to do in Fire before you went home. And here's what I have. Oh, no. Re I don't remember this. <laughs> this will be good. <laughs> release parents. Because Fio's parents are in the asylum. Mm -hmm. No drugs. <laughs> the last time Essie was here, she did drugs. Shop for presents and buy a gift for Varl. Oh, that's right. Yes. Oh, the, the makeup, the, the I'm sorry gift that he doesn't know about. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, that, that, that's right. That's what was going on. So, I remember now. We rescued the King of Keys. Uh, everything has been set back to the way it was in Fire. You're in Vire. Is there anything you want to do before you go back to Kentargo? Going to buy a nice, elaborate... I'm going to buy some fancy embalming fluid. And maybe some, some new Tinker's tools for Varl. Uh-huh. <laughs> what, what is... <laughs> What is Varl Tinker on? Want to tell I'm, I'm curious now. Just in case, in case there's a viewer who is new and doesn't know <laughs> what, what you feel bad about, could somebody tell? Well, you see, viewer in chat, that isn't us. Um, there was <laughs> there was an incident in these woods. Wait, wait, did we forget to pay people again? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Wait, everybody throw your bits in. Hurry up. Uh, I did check because I was curious. Um, so there was this forest and we went there and we heard there's a storm going on and we found out that it was like a storm horse. And I said, I wanna I wanna ride the storm horse. And everyone was surprised. And then I was very surprised after I rode the storm horse because then 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 the storm horse asked if I wanted to go for a real ride and I flipped the coin and Essie said yeah and so she rode the storm <laughs> in many ways and the group has no no one has any idea and he just Essie just disappeared for like I disappeared night. for yeah. a few hours you yeah. know and then I came back and was like hey guys what's up and we keep asking her, but she's oddly non-specific about what went down. <laughs> and, and the most suspicious thing was like, Essie's asking us what was up. 
Like that was like as he's trying to trying to act normal. <laughs> Make small talk, yeah. <laughs> Make small talk? Alright, hold on. What's going hold on? Up. <laughs> so racked with guilt. <laughs> uh, you go through the ruby market and you get fancy embalming fluid, tinkers tools. I don't know if you guys can afford this stuff. Uh, if you have uh, oh, how much um, money you have, yeah. Have we even bothered keeping I mean, track? Of we could be total <laughs> jerks and like bargain. <laughs> we could. <laughs> One gold. One gold. I'll give you three silver. <laughs> One gold for your finest embalming fluid. <laughs> As like servants follow us behind with like this chest full of like gold. <laughs> yeah. Like no. <laughs> And these these undead with magical items and full sets of armor. Yeah. We can't afford them, Cole. I'm sorry. Leave them a generous three copper tip. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay, so you buy some gifts. Do you want to do anything yep. else in Vire? I'm, pretty, I'm good. They don't sell magical daggers there, do they? I'm sure they have magic daggers. Plus one. We, we don't have enough of those. Only plus one. Never if mind. Plus one dagger. I think a plus one dagger is five hundred gold. Uh, oh, I'm sure we'll find one all? laying around here or there. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So <laughs> you must have a million of them by now. Yeah. I think I'm going for a six pack. I think that's the goal now. Oh. <laughs> just make a cape full of like plus one daggers. <laughs> yeah, you just mm -hmm. have a trench coat. You're like, hey, kids, want to buy some daggers? <laughs> Okay. This, so you, this one does venom damage. So you're going to return to Kintargo? Yes. Maybe, okay. You want to buy some poison here? Mm. It would oh. be something that works. Oh. I don't... Yeah, I used a lot of my poison up. I know you have. Because you, you keep using it and then going, dang it, when they make their con saves. Mm, yeah, I do, so. do that a lot. Does, um, does Vire get a lot of interesting, like, mounts? Or piece of war. <laughs> we, we should just drag all of tonight on for doing nothing but purchasing things. <laughs> yeah, it's a shopping episode, everyone. We can buy a That's ship. how we return after our little I, high I walk up to a random stall and I'm like, hello there, oh, stall no. person. We could buy <laughs> what, another. What do you sell? What's we your name? <laughs> What's your backstory? Yeah, tell me do all you about your life. members? <laughs> how episode. long have you lived in Vire? <laughs> I'm Vire Vireson. <laughs> I am Vire I grew, NPC number four. I grew, I grew up in Vire, and I really like Vire. I mean, we could double Kentargo's navy here by getting another we ship. That's oh, the we thing. could. Ooh. We could get a second ship and double the navy. <laughs> Put mm. the monkey in charge. That one. I found it's the sentient now. Poison mm -hmm. list. If you want to buy poisons, I buy all the poisons. Buy okay. no pains. I mean, the most expensive ones are Midnight Tears. Purple worm poison, which is two thousand gold, and wyvern poison, which is twelve hundred gold. What's wyvern poison do for that much money? Wyvern poison, DC fifteen con save, twenty four poison damage. Purple worm does, is a DC nineteen and does forty two poison damage. Whoa. What was the midnight? Two? Oh, it's an ingested one. God. Sounds pretty cool. I don't think we have any thirty-one poison poisons. damage. Yeah, I mean, oh. if you get the really expensive one, it's like you're it's like you're stabbing them with gold. But the midnight tears, <laughs> the the midnight tears doesn't kick in until the stroke of midnight. Ooh, oh. that's dramatic. Well, that's good. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Let's get some <laughs> they think they're, they think they're safe. I feel like yeah. that's the way that everyone knows what they died from is like exactly at midnight. Mm -hmm. But what if all the clocks are different? So the gremlins thing. Just Time is relative. That's, Wait, it's midnight we where? Everyone Mid for a dinner party, but we set all the <laughs> clocks an hour it, early, midway through. Is it is then... it midnight local or midnight like Greenwich Mean Time or like what midnight are we talking about? This could be a great basis for a D and D like closed locked room mystery. You know, <laughs> like, the clock was reset. That's why it was midnight. That's good. All right, what's my poison budget? I mean, whatever. Awesome. How much gold okay, do you so have? We'll take, we'll, take yeah, one, that, we'll take one Midnight Tears. And what else do we want? Um, can I get the Essence of Ether? How much is that? 300 gold. That's easy, right? Uh -huh. I'll take one of those. That has to be inhaled. Yeah. And 
What was the other one? Wyvern? Uh, yeah, the Wyvern poison is injury. DC 15, 24 poison. Okay, we'll take one of those. How much should I spend? 3,000? <laughs> okay, that's probably enough. <laughs> Whatever you want. Whatever. Yeah, you did. Okay. Alright, so you buy some poison. Buy some gifts. Uh, is that it? You gonna go to Kintargo, or do you want to do something else? That sounds good. I will release my parents. I will draft up some uh, legal documents in Kintargo, then release them. I'm not going to release them face to face. Of course not. I will not look at them. Too personal. Mm -hmm. So, all right. When you set up their release, Mm -hmm. are you just, I mean, are they just going to go to the streets? No, I'll set them up with allowance, of course. Oh, okay. But I have to talk to Valnestra to uh, release them. So they'll be back home at some point. I mean, not in a huge rush. Okay. All right. So you return to Kintargo, um, mm-hmm. the city that you freed from the rule of Barzillai Thrun. Um, are you hurt at all? Do you need to rest after your trip? Or I don't think we. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Wouldn't long long rest be implicit on the trip back, Fire? Sure. I mean, Fio's not doing any work on this on this boat, so you know. Okay. <laughs> so I'm, in, I'm re-embalming all of my undead on the boat ride back. All right. Ooh. That's a little weird. Yeah. I mean, it mm-hmm. has to be done. Maintenance is important. And we've got, I think we're by far very easy by right now. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it would I'm be weird if me. she didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm probably teasing the monkey the whole way back. God. Is that a euphemism? Or... <laughs> Oh it's not, God. you know, it's not, like as, it it's not as much money when the monkey, I mean, it's not as, it's not as much fun when the monkey, like, can, now. like, yell back at you. <laughs> I feel like our second ship needs to be the teasing monkey or something. <laughs> the teasing monkey, <laughs> yes. The monkey tease, sir. The monkey <laughs> tease. <laughs> All right, so All you right. return to Kintargo, and I know you guys spend a lot of time at Essie's mansion. Mm-hmm. When you get there... Your other sisters tell you that one of your sisters has got, you know, the one, Elizabeth, who's really into the Temple Hill Slasher, went off uh, searching for clues and never returned. Oh, great. All right. Well, have you put up missing posters? They shrug and say no. All right. Well, I guess I have people for that. Now that I'm Lord Mayor of Kintargo, so I'll, where did you where did you bleh, did she say where she was last going? Okay, your sisters explained that you know there's been weird murders in the city. Yeah, yeah. So she thinks it might somehow be linked to the old Temple Hill slasher, who mm-hmm. was a serial killer who was in the city long, long. Time. I'm gonna go into Elizabeth's room and see if she's got a conspiracy board set up. Yes, she does. And pretty much she, the last thing she was going to do was check out Alabaster Academy because okay. the Temple Hill Slasher was actually a teacher at the Academy Ooh. who taught okay. medical school, like in an operating table. He would teach people dissection and stuff like that. A useful so skill. She figured maybe this... Either this, if this was like a deranged person who thought they were the Temple Hill Slasher, then maybe they were at the school as a teacher or as a deranged student or something. Okay, I'll just I'll have my some of my my skill of friends just carry the conspiracy board back to town hall, uh, <laughs> and um, be like, uh, guys, one of my sisters is missing. What is I think it's this? related to this serial killer. She's really into it. Wait, which sister is this? This is Elizabeth. Oh. So you're saying your sister went and investigated on her own? Most likely. Investigates probably a strong word. More like obsessively stalked. That's probably a better term. Wait a okay. second. Wasn't Varl one of the slasher at some point? Uh, he had the the knife. Yes. 
Oh, don't let him do know about that. Do we still have the knife, right? Do we? Do we? No. no. What, what do we do with it? It got stolen from the safe oh. house. Ah. Hey, did anybody search Varl? <laughs> Varl doesn't do that anymore. Varl is happy. There is no betrayal in Varl's life. He's perfectly happy. Oh, oh, oh yeah. yeah oh. Varl, when, oh, yeah. What do you know about Varl when... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Secrets and lies. <laughs> oh, what a tangled web we weave. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, do we have any leads ourselves about where she went? Yes. I I've confiscated her conspiracy board and oh. Oh, this show it. Let's let's examine oh, it. Terrifying... There's a lot of red yarn. Yeah. Oh, there's terrifyingly in depth. Oh my god. All right. I'm pretty sure she started it when she was like 12. It's, so just, it's, it's okay. got a lot on it. It shows the deaths that you, um, pretty much each time we played, you ran into one. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I have them here. Um, <clears throat> there was two victims buried in the Temple Hill Gardens. There was one, uh, a tiefling chef. Who was murdered in his kitchen? Oh, that's right. Yeah, we investigated that one. His mm -hmm. torso that and head were cooked like yeah. a roast. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's... In, the... in his mouth. Yeah. Then there was the owner of Kalimber's Dry Goods and Supplies, who was killed ten minutes after his shop closed, and his body was displayed on the street. He's basically encased in wax. Yeah. Creative. This whole thing. Mm. Uh. Yeah. All right, so we have former victims. We should probably investigate where she last seemed to be headed, the Alabaster Academy. Okay. Our task is set. As you step outside of Essie's mansion, something in the sky is flying towards you. It looks to be a silver raven. Oh, oh. oh watch out. My first thought was, is it a dragon again? Yeah, I'll see. Yeah, that's like, really? yeah. they not to learned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, then, uh, we wait for the silver raven token. It flies towards oh. one, two, it's, three, four. As long as it doesn't burrow into one of us again. Yeah. Well, Rawl, it's flying towards <laughs> oh, you. Of course. Okay. Is it slowing down? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will. Allow it to alight on my shield. Okay. It lands on your shield and it speaks. It says, um, I have left you a gift on the roof of the opera house. Yours truly, the Temple Hill Slasher. Great. Oh, good, theatrics. How much you want to bet it's my sister? I mean... <sighs> Let's I roll my eyes, but you can't tell because you're all white. <laughs> <laughs> the silver raven takes flight and flies off into the sky. How did he get one of our silver ravens? Hold on. Does yeah. this mean it's. That's it's one of his own. Uh, they're making them in like Cheliacs now. It's like a <laughs> rip off. The yeah, they're like... making them. <laughs> it's terrible. Made in, made um, in Chili X. You have to look at the bottom of it to see where it was yeah. made. <laughs> silver yeah. crows. The authentic ones. <laughs> oh, the silver crows. Knock off. You have to keep on like, new chargers every edition. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so let's go. Are you alarmed at this? Uh, sorry, I should say, is Essie alarmed? Uh, other than the rolling of the eyes uh, that um, her sister might be in mortal danger. She She seems to be perturbed. Okay. How does she show that? Because um, it's her. It is her. I think she's probably fidgety. Mm. Okay. Like maybe antsy. Yeah. Got it. All right. Um. So we should move with all haste. Um. Can we please be riding horses by this point? I feel like we're nobles. <laughs> yeah. Good. It's just very important to me. <laughs> Why walk? I'm really tempted just to have a palaquin because I have so many undead. It would actually yeah. take less space. Oh, oh yes, that's fine. Yes. That's cool. 
you do you. I mean, undead paladin I mean, for sure. I mean, but, Fio wants to pull, but pulled by a, people. Or just a wagon, just a bandwagon of zombies yeah. and skeletons. Okay, so you go to the opera house. Yes. Yeah. Make your way onto the roof. Yep. Yeah. Do we see anything from the ground level? No. Or no. Okay. Wait, um, I'll go first. I want to use my slippers and I want to go sneaky. With so my cloak. When you arrive at the opera house, you're gonna ditch the party and go up to the roof alone. Well, I'll go ahead of them. I'm... That's it, ditch is such a strong word. I mean, you know what? If anything, <laughs> like that. you know, every time like if stuff bad stuff happens, it's gonna be loud. So we'll know. It's true. Yeah. All right. So I mean... you arrive at the opera house. Ash just dismounts and just runs up the wall, exterior wall, and goes on to the roof alone. And the rest of you, what do you do? Um, I stand close to Few and Rall and prepare a dimension door in case Ashes shouts something in alarm. You just see Few like stretching, um, just getting ready. Because if, if not, I can just we can go up the stairs. But if there's I mean, trouble, then it's better to just teleport. Oh my gosh, she just ran in. <laughs> Stick to the plan. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. Uh, like I'm happy to go up the stairs the normal way, but if we go inside the opera, now we're not going to hear any shouts of distress. That I, I'm just waiting. I, I've dimension door readied. So, okay. All right. Uh, I'll I'll stand by in case we need dimension door entrance. So Ash, yes, you go up the wall, get onto the roof. Do I have to make a stealth check? No. You see a body, kind of, I don't know, just lying there. It's Essie's sister, Elizabeth. Uh oh. From where you're standing, the body appears relatively unmutilated. Oh, well. <laughs> relatively. That's one less thing I have to explain to Essie. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna cautiously approach the body and just positively identify it and, and... I'm just standing on I'm just on the ground like this, just waiting. You notice um, it has a puncture mark at the base of its neck. It has been impaled on a slashing or piercing weapon mm. of some type. Um, and you also notice it has been cut open and stitched shut with lengths of silver wire. Oh, wait, wait, the body? Like where at? Like, like the neck? She's, she's wearing um, clothes that give like a bare midriff. So you can see that the midriff was sliced open and then, and then stitched stitch. shut with silver wire. And her abs don't look abby. It's like, there's oh. some, it looks like Are you saying was... they look abnormal? No. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> no, it looks like actually th things might have been put in there. Oh. Wonderful. Um, I hope Ash is get ganked, ganked too. You said Ashes, the body are was. Are you all right? <laughs> I think so. Give me one more minute. <laughs> you said this body was not mutilated. <laughs> <I hear laughs> <that correctly. laughs> I'm just Relative, trying to figure out relative, what you meant by not rel mutilated. Relatively. <laughs> relatively. Compared to oh, the other murders that we've seen from this. Compared episode. to the man compared that was. Compared to the serial killer. Compared to the human okay. turkey dinner that we was putting on there. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, true. Uh, I yell down, um, I think I found your sister, but don't come up right away because it's not good. Okay, we'll take the stairs, and then we'll oh. just we'll take oh. the stairs. Instead of I try to make it right. presentable. Okay. <laughs> that gives you a few minutes. I mean, it... what do you mean make it presentable? What do you do? Uh, I um... <laughs> mutilate it worse. Just. <laughs> just... <laughs> You just lay lay her out real nice, you know. Brush through the hair a bit. Yeah. yeah I set her up against something. We can't burn it. Put a like smile Ashes on her face. Fine. <laughs> Ashes. <laughs> you you just go to set the body up, and suddenly there's a oh. massive explosion. Oh, we can't bring that back. Oh, oh no. Apparently, <laughs> the body's organs were replaced with volatile alchemical solutions Fantastic. contained inside of fragile silver casings. Oh, so I, when you I, I was going to do an autopsy when I got up there, but... Uh... So, 
You're There's your loud things. noise. You had to make things look presentable. You'll need to make a <laughs> deck save. I mean... Uh, well, at least I'm good at these. Yeah, at least. Famous last word. Oh, boy. How about 24? Okay. So normally you would have taken 30 fire, but instead you take 15. You know, rogues have these that have this really cool thing called evasion, that mm -hmm. when I make a save, I don't take any damage. So... <laughs> You notice what's happening. Um, unfortunately, I do have pieces of Essie sister all over me. <laughs> yeah, so you when might, you guys come I mean, up the stairs, you might want to keep some of that. <laughs> open the door to the roof. Boom! Boom. <laughs> what did you do? What the hell? I want to. I want to. I want to think I'm still in like a oh, position disgusting. where I'm trying to like set the body, and I just have like two shoulders. Why? <laughs> You're covered in blood ashes. What? It's, what did you what do? Is, oh, it's better this way. Oh. This is not spontaneous. Combustion. I thought you said her sister was up here. Well, she is. <laughs> like some, oh. somewhere in the Kentargo market, these people are like, you call this a head of lettuce? This is the oh, worst no. head of lettuce I've ever oh, no. seen. And then shh, severed head of Elizabeth. Oh, we need that head though. Lands. And the vendor oh. says, that one's worse. <laughs> All right. I, I turned down the stairs and I... I quick, I, I hand out the wanted posters I made, like have you, missing posters. I'm gonna write on the backs, and I'm gonna hand them out. Like, just go down to the market, collect the pieces, just get as much as you can. Oh. <laughs> mm. I'm gonna pass it out to my my zombies and skill friends. Do so you right. have your undead so should... collect pieces? Collect out as many pieces as they can, and then I'll go up back behind them. If we get enough, maybe we can. Resurrect. I, I would, think Fio, I would guess at this point you're on the roof and you're starting to hear people all around the neighborhood like going, ah! <laughs> as they find like a hand, you I'm know, or a foot. piece of liver. Maybe Any little... body organs that do not belong to you, please deposit <laughs> at the what... Cantago Opera House, please and thank you. I see, I'm going to ask you something, Lil Ford. Can't she be brought from what just happened? Or she dead, dead. Wait, um, was that a question for me? For for Essie. Sorry. I I heard thudding in the oh. other room, and I just it's just the cat. It's so good. Um, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna do attempt once we have all the body pieces back. A medicine check to see if she's revivable. I mean, it blew up, so yeah. A lot well, of you it know, just blowed up. No. The whole middle of the body is blown up, but mm. I mean, there's probably hands, head, and feet, and maybe a okay. leg and an arm. It's going to take some work. I put the Might shoulders down. Might have to <laughs> just put the shoulders down. I don't think a normal revive spell will work on her. Theo puts away the but revive. But I have some ideas. <laughs> so, okay. I'm just like, okay. and... all right, Elizabeth, and I'm just going to start putting her in the handy hat for a sec. Oh, God. Okay, well, this is probably deliberate just, the way it was set up. She just needs a new, a new torso. I get, we get them in all the time at the morgue. I mean, the church does owe us a favor, I guess. So, oh. <clears throat> who who do we know in Cantargo that would know about explosives? Because her body was rigged with mm -hmm. silver twine and explosives. Was so it's it, gotta be a clue. Was it, was it rigged? With how well, how was the body when you found it, Ashes? It was rigged, <laughs> Essie. <laughs> how were the documents? You seem awful fidgety lately. <laughs> <laughs> Legitimacy when you found them, Ashes. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make her presentable for you, Essie. <laughs> well, she's certainly not presentable now, is she? No, she isn't. No. So that's I did not the want last to see that. time I ever try to help with a gloom. Raven. This certainly was not the <laughs> first right. thing I Next wanted to see. Next body we find, I examine it first. Fine. I, that is what I do. Uh, I guess on the bright side, no one else was hurt. I mean, with the, the trap. It was clearly intended for us. Oh, we do have her head, though. So we could speak with undead. Speak with Dead and talk to her about what she saw. There we go. Oh, good. I wasn't planning on sleeping tonight, so. Let's do that then. 
because I know we have a, a scroll of that. Can I, can I, while well, we're considering this, can I do like a, <clears throat> is there a thing I can do where I can check the rooftop, like just look for evidence of like how the killer might have got the body there or where the killer might have gone, a path? We do know that the, the killer has the ability to teleport. We learned oh, that at a previous right. scene. Mm-hmm. That's Teleport right. and had those explosives. And invisibility, I think. So it's got a whole bevy of skills that make it the perfect killer. Mm. Yet it's why never would come it after anyone us? we knew until now. Yeah, why is it making it personal? I mean, we didn't put away the weapon, assumedly forever. It might have a grudge. Did we? I mean... We did kill its its previous owner. Yeah. Well, (laughs) it should like that. I mean... Hmm. Maybe it didn't like the wedding. Hmm. Okay. So... Yes. What do we know about places that make silver thread? What do we know about places that make very e- delicate vials that would work as an explosive? Are there any kind of leads that we could go down that route? Hmm. I mean, there was. They did say something about going to the academy, so maybe somebody might know there. Yes. Okay. She was hunted Let's go to Perhaps the... she's, someone saw her with somebody. Okay. Some of the faculty is uh was acting suspiciously. Who knows? I mean, that's only Lee right now. So, is there anything else that you need to do with regards to the body before we go there? I've got as many of the pieces as I think we're going to find. Mm, you pat the sack. <laughs> Remind no, me I got it all covered. <laughs> all right, then I suggest we go to the academy. One of my other sisters is really into golems, so I'm thinking if we can get a new torso, oh. she can come back as a flesh golem. Mm. Not really my speciality, but... I hate those things. <laughs> they're, just, they're just so much more work and maintenance than... They make the worst zombies sounds. Zombies and skeletons. Right. Uh, well, it's your family. You would yeah. know what she would want best. So you're going to go to Alabaster Academy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. When people there realize that the Ward Mayor of Kintargo <laughs> is there. Headmaster Ilvana oh, Des- God, Desdoros, a lawful neutral female half-elf transmuter level 7. Um grants you a private audience immediately. Fantastic. I I imagine, like, we didn't even get time to, like, examine the grounds. We, like, walked through the gate, and they were like, (laughs) oh, here here you go. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh. She says, um, I am worried that there's a copycat killer who has taken up the slasher's tactics. There's definitely a, a copycat killer who's Taking up the slasher's tactics, and then some. The original Temple Hill slasher was Professor Mang Boon. His old office was closed up following his execution years ago. But, um... People always talk about how that area is haunted or cursed. I've always discounted the rumors, and have worked to prevent their spread out of a desire to move on. From this dark time in our school's past. Um, but I, if it would help, I could show you the professor's old office. Yes, that would be very good. Did my sister come by? Yes, we turned her away. She seemed crazed. Oh, that's, that's just her. Um... I'm so sorry for your loss. It. We all die at some point. Oh. There's some real weird family perspective on death, and then I mean, <laughs> when your dad's a necromancer yeah. and your mom's a vampire, and really, yeah, you're like, eh, it happens. We'll come back. We'll get around it one way or another. Oh, it's fine. 
So she escorts you into uh, the abandoned halls where the old office is. Which it's in a disused wing of the Academy's Natural Sciences Building. She bemoans the fact that the Academy's enrollment numbers have never recovered from the scandal that Mang Boon caused. And she readies a large ring of keys as you all approach the door. Yet the five heavy locks she expects to still be sealing the door to Mang Boon's office have all been melted away by what appears to be acid, leaving the door to his office hanging open. I don't That's think it's supposed peculiar. to be like that. Um, she says, this is, um, I don't think we should go in there. Oh, the hell with that plan. Oh, someone's oh, already shit. been in there. Someone <laughs> broke in. I, I swing up onto the ceiling above the doorway, ready to sort of Spider-Man in, waiting for Raw to enter. I'm just, I, yeah. Fio's going to put her back against Raw the did. wall, like, just so she's not in the way of the doorway. She knows how this works. They they murdered the Gloom Raven. They must pay. We must investigate. And I just unsheath the shovel. Okay. All right. What do we see? Inside, the professor's old office is empty. But no perception check is necessary to note the passage of several booted feet through the dust on the floor of the room. The tracks seem to approach a bookshelf behind the old oak desk on the north wall, but do not appear to return when you say several booted feet like different sizes like different types or just the same one size of booted feet is bigger okay. than the others okay interesting so there's mm. maybe there's more than one killer in on right. this right we're going to go over to the bookcase and mm -hmm. see if it can be moved aside we'll make it move. make a perception check um uh, okay uh, but if this doesn't work, he's literally going to just try to manhandle the bookshelf aside. I mean, yes, yes. I mean, because <laughs> he, he has the suspicions, but not based upon whether he sees like the right thing. This is, this is basically uh, how much does uh, the bookcase want to stay in one piece at this moment? Yeah, it, that's all it is. Um, my perception <laughs> is going to be a 17. Okay. Um, you, all right, you detect a secret door built into the shelves and you know how to open it. Do you open it? Yes. Well, wait. And everybody's in the room? Well, <laughs> how, do, how do I open it? Like, what is the It doesn't method? say, so I assume it's just like you just grab a shelf, pull, and it, it, there's, a, there's mm. a door. Then yes, I do it. Alright. Uh, opening it reveals a narrow crawlway with a ladder leading down. Okay. All right. There's a soft glow coming from the darkness where the ladder leads to. Okay. Hmm. Right, Rawl goes down the ladder. Is everybody going down or just wrong? I'll leave my zombies and skeletons up here in case somebody tries to muscle their way through. That's not us. They have to go through, you know, 16 people. <laughs> um... <laughs> And I'll follow Rawl. Is the head is the headmistress still here with us? She's outside. She won't go in this room. I'll like. You didn't know about this secret doorway, did you? She says no. No. Oh, no wonder no enrollment's down, and she'll float down. <laughs> there's, I, e there's economical <laughs> factors. <laughs> I'll just shut the door. <laughs> like, on I kind of better to myself while the gloom ravens won't be investing. Mm. I'll, I'll <laughs> shut the door. Uh, I'll shut the door on this lady and click my dagger of venom so that it's activated, and then I'll I'll go down too. Ooh. So the ladder leads down to a very small ten foot square room, which is empty save for a softly glowing magic circle inscribed in the floor. And there's a message mm. written in flowing, drippy letters on the wall. Cool. It says, Welcome to my home, Silver Ravens! Exclamation point. Oh, this doesn't look good. All right. So I'm going to look at the circle. Is it a teleportation circle? Yes, and it's got, in the runes, it has the command word to activate it. So you Okay, I'm going to mark down what the runes are to this destination as well. I'm going to write that down in a notebook. Okay. 
kind of get its its you know get them teleportation circle digits in case we need to use it later and once i get the spell teleport i'll be able to send this here okay one. so i'm can guessing use, they want us the to circle use to get somewhere the circle to find them there's some elaborate trap it's probably a trap but <laughs> So it certainly doesn't look good that this killer keeps taking out c- citizens, so. Yes, we, it's our job to protect Kentargo, so, so that includes serial killers. I mean, it would look incredibly good if we, you know, brought him, brought this awful, awful human to justice. It's personal now for me, so. Yes. Like, doubly personal. I just look at the bag <laughs> and just kind of, like, make a frown. Hmm. I look at the bag and I look at Varl and I'm just like, it's doubly personal. It's just gotta get this taken care of. So you're uh, gonna step into the circle and say the word? Can can we can we use something to our advantage here? Like, do we think this killer has something against... Like, what if I shifted into the form of your sister, Essie? Almost as if we defiantly brought her back. Ooh, Ooh. I like it. I think that um, could be fun. I mean, a nerve at the it very would de- least. It could definitely throw them off a bit. And I'm wait, gonna bring wait, two wait. zombies with, just in case, for backup. Uh, so Dongfish and Horngus are gonna come down. <laughs> <What? laughs> I don't name them! What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I must have missed <laughs> the creation of those <laughs> along the way. <laughs> what What was this again? <laughs> But I'm not gonna lie. When I when I think things are super dangerous, I definitely take the ones that are like, mm, those are some interesting oh, names. You Let's bring them along. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you will be promoted no. if you survive this and do a good job. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Poops McGee. I didn't think Poops McGee was gonna make it, but now he's up there. I mean, Poops McGee like, survived yeah. like six arrow shots. So, so. many. Yeah. So you know, maybe Dogfish and Horngus will do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? they gotta earn those names, you know. Gotta, so, yeah. so they're they're given red shirts based on the quality of their names. <laughs> yeah. yes. uh, no, we give them we give them magic items like That's true. the rank. Yeah. So it's like, like well, I, I, was, I can't bring Grindle the coin counter down here. We liked him. So. Yeah, we yes. definitely play favorites. Yeah, I mean, Teachil Mango is still my favorite. Yeah, oh, has a swan dive. Swan, dive. swan dive. And Tad, I mean, Tad, the yeah, tennis, that tennis yes. racket. So. Yeah, so I, I bring those two down to come teleport with us. Because usually it's up to like six or seven, so that'll be six with them. Okay. So you all get in the circle and you speak the word? Hold hands and speak the word just in case. All right. I'm looking like a, a gloom raven. Here we, we go. We want to buff ourselves before we go through, like if we got any buffing spells. Um, hold on, let me look. It's been so long. You know what? I'll sing you. I'll sing I'll a song. Mage armor on myself. I'll sing a song to make us feel better and embolden us, so everyone mm. gets temporary hit points. How many temporary hit points? It, it is eleven. Yep, eleven temporary hits. Sweet. All right. <laughs> how many? How many characters is it? Up to five. So. All right. Uh, which Which one do you like more <laughs> of the two? Oh no! Now we find out. <laughs> now we All find right. out. We find out them. Dongfish or Horngus? I kind of like Horngus. <laughs> so Horngus gets the temp HP. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Poor dongfish. I know. <laughs> if I had a favorite, it might be that one now. <laughs> I mean, it'll make che- you know. It makes che- Chomango me- like nervous because Teach Mango has the water theme. So yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. So you, that's uh, that's all my prep is <laughs> major. All right. all right. So you're all ready to go through. Mm-hmm. I could cast okay. water breathing if we're really paranoid. Do you want us to just because rit- I can do it as a ritual, so it doesn't take a spell slot. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, so we can breathe underwater, and I have mage armor. Cool. Yes. Yep. All right. So you teleport. You appear uh, on the screen. There's a room called E1. <gasps> oh, man. So uh, mm-hmm. if you have Twitch on, you will be able to I see, see that. And, of course, it is lit partially by Rawl's glowing mini. The best <laughs> mini. Ah, uh, the glowing mini. Rawl is lit. <laughs> and the ashes looks a lot like ashes. The ashes mini. Well, cause we know that the glow is now from the talisman of pure good, so mm-hmm. it makes thematic. It does sense. make sense, yeah. <laughs> right, that's right. I forgot. 
Okay, it was, so it was a bit of foreshadowing with light. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. Bit of light foreshadowing. So you appear in a room. The bare stone walls of this room are etched with spiky, curling runes of overlapping writing. A mm. ten foot diameter magic circle glows softly on the floor. Um, the writing oh, oh, on the oh, wall no, the... is in abyssal. Oh. Oh. Oh, I, re I read Infernal, not Abyssal. Yeah, I think we all, like... Frawl has but I will write down the magic runes on like in a, in a notebook. Okay. And that those runes will allow you to teleport back to the place you came from. Cool. Mm. So you're, you're not sure where you are. I yes. Mean, you, you were in the Academy, now you could we be... We may anywhere. not even be in Kentago anymore. I mean, stuff's not on fire, we're not underwater, we're not in, like, you know, acid, so... To start, you teleport directly into a big room of acid. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's like Planescape stuff. You, yeah, you teleport I, uh, pure light and you explode. It's a fun time. So, uh, there's just a door in the room. All right, yeah. you want me to check the door? I checked the door. Okay, you'd have to be quick to get in there, but. Because Rawl's not waiting, but if you do step in front deliberately, then okay, I let I let Rawl check the door, <laughs> and by Rawl opening it, <laughs> Rawl, this actually has its own sound effect in the, in oh. the Sirens oh. game. Uh oh, I'll play it first. It's loud and freaky, but you won't hear it. But the viewers will. Uh, here it is. <laughs> You see, you hear like clanking noises, and then all of a sudden from the ceiling, razor sharp spears coated with an abyssal anticoagulant stabs down at. Uh... Let's see, does it hit everybody? It does. All what? The... Anticoagulant? So the whole room from the ceiling spears. Oh no. Oh no. Come down. Oh no. So, oh, no. Everybody, please most, make a dex The most dark of blood thinners. Dexterity safe? Yes, please. Oh boy. Deck saves. All right, the new dice. Come on. Come on. Oops. What is that? That's 12. I definitely didn't forget 12. to get dice out. <laughs> 17. All right. Oh, oh. Okay. Not uh, good. Nat 20. Okay. Nat 20. Ashes, what'd you get? 19. What about Raw? Raw got a three. Let me roll for, Zombies, for yeah. Dongfish and Horngus. Oh, oh my God. Dongfish got the deck save. That's not going to be great, Dongus. Oh, uh, got oh, a seven. Oh, no, but Dongfish, Orgus no. Got a 15. This 15 is be. good. 15 makes it. Okay. Okay. Orgus knows so. we believe in him. Well, but if this is poison damage, undead should be fine. That's so true. The ceiling spears do 20 damage if you fail your save. Oh, boy. 10 right. if you make it. What kind of damage? It's just piercing. piercing. Just piercing. Okay. Cool. I have one. <laughs> cool. So that's only those who are hit by it. Uh, I I don't think this would count for the undead because they don't bleed. Yeah, but they don't. It, it creates bloody wounds, and you lose five hit points per round. Unless what? we. Everybody, roll initiative. That'll help. Me oh what? Oh, oh shnikes! No. Hold on. Sorry, dogfish. I gotta give you that twenty damage. Oh, Dogfish, no. Dogfish, no. no. Right, First day on the job. to know you. <laughs> oh, I rolled bad. I rolled really good. So let's see. Um, Theo, what'd you get? <sighs> I got a five. I rolled what a about two. What SE? 21. Damn. What about Ashes? 14. I only rolled a four. <laughs> what about Raw? dice missed her. Six. Oh, wow. Okay. So... Spears shoot down, stab into everybody. They retract up into the ceiling. Um, and then it is Essie's turn. Who was any, were any of you hit? Like, did any of you fail your save? Rawl mm -hmm. did, right? Yeah, I did. So Rawl has got nasty, bloody wounds that are just starting to gush blood. What do you want to do, Essie? Do I see any enemies? No, and the door was opened. And it leads to a hallway. Yeah. Okay, well, I, unfortunately, I can't do anything for Rawl right now unless he's really injured or 
did. And then I don't think he wants to come back as a zombie. So uh, I'm going to just push past through the door and look into the hall. One, two, three. Okay, so you see a hallway. The hallway has stairs that go down mm -hmm. and lead into what looks like a large room. There's a number of doors in that room. Okay. The uh, room also has a like a lowered section. Okay. Uh, does I'm gonna check for traps in this hallway. All right, make a perception. <laughs> Net one. It's fine. I'll just start walking down, shovel out. <laughs> so you move three. And my zombies will follow. Your zombies can only have a speed twenty. Of twenty, right? Yeah. But you're double moving. Yeah. So, all right, as <clears throat> as you start to walk towards this room. Yeah. Um, that the spear trap made a lot of noise. Oh, I'm it, sure it, it did. Alerted four red-skinned creatures in this room, who are Got starting to mobilize. All right. Yeah. Are... Yep. Shovels out. So, Ready. do you want to move again to get closer to them, or do you want to I stay think, in the hallway? I think I'm going to stay in the hallway and prep. A great weapon master green flame shovel if, get, if one gets within range. Okay. Okay. And then, so you're ready. Okay. Let me get rid of one of them. All right. That's it for Essie. Ashes, what would you like to do? Brawl is bleeding. He's going to start losing five hit points at the start of his turn, which is right after me, which is right after you. Um. I want to push my way out to the doorway and get onto the ceiling and get as far down the hallway as I can. What's your speed? 30? 1, 2, 35. Three, four, 5, 6. Alright. So, with one move, you get right to the edge of the hallway. You're on the ceiling. You see three red skinned creatures who are getting mm. their weapons ready. And how far are, away are they from me at that point? Right now, the closest one is 25 feet away. Okay, so instead of continuing and double moving, then I will... Uh, I'll cast a visibility. Oh, okay. Shoo. All right. Is that it for uh, Ashes? That's it for me. On my turn, these red-skinned evildoers with claws and daggers and uh, let me see if they have ranged attacks. That would be easier for me. Let's see. Do they? Oh, <gasps> they do. Okay. Uh oh. All right. So Essie. Yes. These scoundrels. Yep. These evil, extra planar entities line up. Yep. Hold out their hands. Oh shoot no. Shoot fire rays. At Great. Them. Each one can shoot. Two of them. So you're six fire rays coming at you. Right. All right. They plus seven to hit. Okay, Where are they moving to, Sean? Before they actually um, like get a shot at there. Are they lining themselves up? Oh yeah. Okay. They're in a straight line. If only I had lightning. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to create six of these d20s, and I'll roll them all at once. Look at them right there. Hey. Whatever you are. Okay. Okay, there we go. 60 20s. That'd be so that weird if I roll them and they all 15 get 15 hits. 15 or greater. Here we go. Roll, roll, roll. Let's see. Gotta get straight down. Plus 7. So let's see. Uh, oh gosh. Don't do that. 7 plus 4. 13 misses, right? Mm-hmm. 18? Yep, that hit. Okay, that one misses. 17, that hits. 
Uh, 5 plus 7 is 12. That misses. What about a 17? Is that hit? That hits. So three hit. Each one does 10 fire. Oh. So take 30 fire. Oop, I better play the... Cool. You know what? Was any of them above a 20? Yeah, I'm sure they were. I, I won't bother shielding. It's just, it's gonna be better to save my stuff for other things. Okay. So 30. L. All right. That is it for the bad guys. And then it is Rawl's turn. Rawl, at the start of your turn, you take five damage from blood loss. This is abyssal anticoagulant. Causes your blood flow to be extreme. All right. Um, is there going to be a save that I can make to stop this? Uh, let's see. How does it work? Uh, hold on, let me... Or is it like a time thing for like the next so many rounds? I think how many you... rounds would take for Rawl to drop from blood loss? A lot. A lot. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like next day, it's like. Oh. Yeah, if, if, if that had gotten me or enough. any of us squishies that have been banned, yeah. <laughs> we're not sacks of HP. Roll just takes a long rest, like, no, nope, we're fine again. Um, it goes, okay, so you, you can make a medicine check to try to do it, or magical healing would probably do it. Hmm. Only magical would, um, an ability heal, like a fighter's um, a second wind prevent it. Is that magic, though? It's an ability that creates health. To roll. How does... What's the... F I don't... Not that I want to... The flavor is fighters are tough, bro. <laughs> I don't think that's magical, though. I think that's just like... It's a kind of magic. <laughs> it's most magic. Magic positive thinking. It's I cast body. <laughs> <laughs> I cast I work out. Level level ten. That's okay. It, Between me and Figo, you'll get healing real yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah, I'll be yeah. fine. Uh, Rawl hasn't got time to bleed, so he uh, just <laughs> no time to bleed. Going. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, I'll move uh, thirty feet, so six squares. That should put me up yep. against the first foe. Yep. Um, I will, as a bonus action, um. Uh, take off uh, some fighting spirit so I get 10 temporary uh, HP that can soak two turns worth of bleed anyway and I will attack this dude with three attacks because I'm level 11 I attack three times nice. oh, yeah, all right nice. first two attacks are with the sword all right does a 25 hit. Yes. Does a 17 hit? No. Okay. So the first are these chaotic aligned thing cuz I I was hearing a bissel. Uh yeah, they are chaotic. Oh boy. Cool. <laughs> so, that means law sword says no. Uh 7 plus 4 plus 8. What does that say? Uh 15. No, more than that. 12 plus 7. 19. 19 lawful magic damage. Okay. Then I'm going to shield touch uh, with my final strike and does an 19 yes. Uh, yes. Sorry, does an 18. That's important. No. 18 does not. So oh. I do miss with the shield because I shield's not a plus. It, the shield's a plus one. Does that include a, a strike with it? Guess. All right, then it's nineteen. I hit. <laughs> well, oh, wait, it's a weapon. It just gives plus one to AC, right? Not plus one to hit. It's a magical. Well, that's the thing, Sean. If I'm wielding it as a weapon, which shields can be done, it does the magic. plus one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, I'm assuming it's evil. Yes. So it's going to take eight d six radiant damage. Boom. It's a very confusing moment for whatever this creature is. Like, what's he doing? Oh, plus... Ah! So 18, 21, plus 10, 31 radiant damage. 31. Radiant? More like radiant. Mm -hmm. 
All right. He howls in pain and begins to bleed from a bloody wound. Cool. I'm done. All right. After Raw is Fio. All right. Well, Fio just walks out down there to see sees three devils, and she's going to... Oh, you're bleeding all over the place. Just finish these off real fast. And then she'll cast... She'll send out these, like, ghostly apparitions at them, and they'll kind of uh, be enthralled by them. So I am casting... Uh, where is that? There, hypnotic pattern on them. It's a wisdom save. Wisdom. All right, I have plus one. Here we go. First one. 18. Mm-hmm. Eight. Okay. And a 16. Sweet. Nope. That only the front one uh, got it. So they are incapacitated until they are hit. Mm. So they're just kind of like. And that'll be my turn. Mm-mm. Okay. You know what? No. Let's. Uh. You know. What? I'll give. Um. SC Bardic Inspiration. It's like, well, you give that one a nice hit to the cranium with that shovel. I'll do my best. After Theo is Essie. All right. I'm going to walk up to this first one here. All right. This place has been very rude thus far. And I'm a little injured. So I'm just going to cast a fifth level Vampiric Touch. And see if I hit with it. Let's okay. see. Uh, 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 plus eight. Uh, 20? Dirty 20. That hits. Okay, so that's gonna be a lot of D6. Oh god, D6, come here. I really should have had my dice more organized. Oh, no. All right, here's a bunch of D6. Okay, so it's three D6, third level, fourth level, fifth level. Okay, six, twelve, sixteen, nineteen. 22 points of necrotic damage, and I regain half of that. Nice. All right. Uh, All right. Hurt very, very badly. Is that it for Essie? Uh, and then I'll move my zombies closer. Can they Can they get a hit on this guy, too? Their can speed is enough? one, two, three, four. They have to double move. Okay. They'll just, they'll just move closer, then. They'll be ready for the next fight. One keeps falling. Okay. <laughs> is that it for Essie? Yeah, that's it for me. All right. Ashes, you're on the ceiling. You're invisible. Rawl's in front of you. And just past Rawl is a, a red-skinned evildoer. So there's that one that's getting whooped up on. And then there's two other ones that are Hypnotized. look dazed. And, yeah. like... There's nothing else in the room? <laughs> the room? Let me see if I can tell you about the room. Just a giant mimic. This unusually like... shaped... <laughs> That's a good idea. This yeah. giant, unusually shaped room runs diagonally northwest to southeast before it wraps around a partial wall. A short flight of steps connects a balcony to the floor below, which contains a few work tables. Two doors line the balcony's northern wall, and additional doors exit the room below to the northeast and to the south. This is a roomy corridor, which fulfills more of an architectural aesthetic than a practical purpose. It's just a room with a sunken central area and a bunch of doors. Mm -hmm. That's all. It looks like a workshop, you said? The, yeah, down, okay. the downstairs part? Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Okay, well, there doesn't seem to be any other threats, so I think I'll run along the ceiling to the one in the back. Uh, since the front one seems to have its hands full with everybody else. So you're going to go to the other two? Yeah, the one, the furthest one away. Furthest. And I will um, I will cast Booming Blade as I drop down on it with my dagger invisibly. Booming Blade, okay. You're past uh, That is a 26 to hit. Yes. Okay. So, let's see. That was with advantage, because I was invisible. So, sneak attack. And what do I get for Booming Blade? 2d8. Here we go. That's 10, 
17, 21, 22, 26 piercing, and three thunder. So 29 altogether. And does poison affect it? Because I had my little poison venom blade uh, activated. Yeah, he's, it does poison does half damage. Okay. Well, it would have to make a con save. It's a DC 15 con save. I got a 10 plus six. No, 16. Uh, okay, so it doesn't take in. All right, that's it. Okay. After Ashes is me. All right, so this one redskin guy is in huge trouble. Um, he's right next to Rawl. So Rawl, he'll try to stab you twice. He's only got plus seven. Fair court. Twenty. Mm -mm. No. Less than 20? <laughs> no. Now, uh, Ashes, you snapped this fellow out of it when you attacked him, right? Yeah, I don't know. Because uh, the hypnotic yeah. pattern? Mm -hmm. Yeah, did I? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it attacks you twice. Stab, stab. Natural one. 22. I cast shield. Yeah. Okay. And the one that's hypnotic patterned, um, does it do anything on its turn or Nope, it just does can't take any actions. Cool. Just cool. staring off at the pretty, pretty colors. Raw, it's your turn. There is a very injured red skinned creature. Alright, so I take five mm -hmm. damage. Which I can take off the temporary HP. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, I'll do another uh, fighting spirit. So I'll up the 10 HP, but back up to 10 temps. Um, and I will take advantage this time. I didn't do it last turn because that was foolish. Um, all right, I, I will uh, begin by striking the dude in front of me. So uh, first attack is going to be above a 20, it's... if it matters. Yep. So he'll deal with that strike. I'm going to do him one at a time because I want to see if it, do it drops. Uh, that's a bad roll. Um, I deal 13 damage total. You slice through him and he oh, kind of okay. vanishes and turns into a puddle of green goo. All right. As part of my movement, I'll move on up to the next guy and see my attacks. You walk through the demon eye core. Yeah. And you attack the hypnotized guy? Yep. All right. So, first attack uh, advantage. will hit him with yep. the same same roll. Well, I already have advantage on everything, so mm -hmm. double advantage. Yes. Um, uh, I get... All right, that's a bit better. Uh, 21 damage for the first strike. Mm -hmm. And then the next strike is going to be not quite a critical... So, another 10 plus 13 is 23 damage. And then I'm going to pop an action surge, and I'm going to get three more attacks. Whoa. All with advantage. Okay. Um, Just... So, I'm going to keep on attacking him. him. What? Ah. So, I think I, I think I miss. I had two low rolls. Next attack... That hits. I deal another six plus ten is sixteen damage, and then the last one's going to be a shield, a little shield touch for him, and that's going to be above a twenty, so it's going to take eighty-six radiant damage. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of sixes and fives. Um. All right. Well, one to even it off, I suppose. All right, so I have six plus nine is fifteen plus ten is twenty-five plus six is thirty-one radiant damage. Turns to a pile of demon icor. All right, I'm done. After Rawl is Fio, there is one left. Ashes right. is, is stabbing it. <laughs> well, I was expecting more from you. Is this your home plan? Because if it is, you're going to die, but if you do go home, it's going to be rather embarrassing, isn't it? I'm going to cast Vicious Mockery on it. Do I save? 
Yep, that is a uh, wisdom save. I got a six. All right. A lot of d4s now. It's more d4s yeah. than I really want to get out of the. There we go. Oof, boy. That was nearly full full points. That was. Let's see. Fifteen psychic damage. Fifteen. All right. And then I am also going to. Um, I'm going to cast a healing word on Raul to keep. All right. So that is one d4 plus. Plus the two d six from this healing serpent. All right, so that okay. Thirteen points of healing, Raul. Oh, you re I'm at I'm at full. Thank you. Okay. Yep. And hopefully that's magic healing. So hopefully that takes care of the. It does. Uh, yeah. It sweet. Yes. The and that's it. Nice. Yeah. All right, after Fio is Essie. Essie, this thing has, uh, like, 38 hit points left. Okay. I'll approach it and Vampiric touch it again. Oh. All right, I save. Oh, no, I got to cast it. I'm going to use my Bardic Inspiration on that because I didn't roll super great. That's much, much, much better. Does it 22? to it. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. I rolled a lot of d6s. Okay, 6, 12, 14, uh, 14, 5, 19, 23 points of necrotic damage, and I heal for half of that. Oh, almost back to full. And then... Drain a lot of life out of it. Yeah, uh, I guess Horngus, um, the dongfish, can they make it up to this guy finally? They're gonna have to like fall over the wall, but one of them could get up. All right, all right. Let's let's see if dongfish can do it. All right, dong. <laughs> this is time for you to prove yourself. You gotta. You're prove making him fall over the wall. <laughs> this is this is Mom, his dongfish. review. This is his performance review at this point. <laughs> That's a that's a five. Dongies, no. Dongfish is not. That, that oh dice. come on, Dongfish! You fell over the this wall. This was your moment. <laughs> God damn it! I have no I'm... recollection of this name. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think everybody just shakes their head at Dongfish. It's like, mm -mm, mm -mm. okay, and that's it for uh, Essie that, and the zombies. Yep. Yeah, that yeah. is a power Dongfish score is... branded name. If I've ever heard one. <laughs> <laughs> there is no denial. Well, I guess we'll just move closer, but you know, I'll just kind of shake his head at, at his buddy Dongfish. All right, yep. Ashes, you go, and then the bad guy goes. So it that has, didn't happen. Uh, it has about fifteen hit points left. So yeah, I stab it. <laughs> oh no, it's a nat one. Oh no, <laughs> offhanded stab. Uh, no, I'll don't use my you bet. have advantage? Uh, do I? We've got people right next to it flanking it, right? Don't yes. rogues have that? I don't know. Does Ashes have that? No, I don't think so. Is that a rogue thing? I don't think that's a... You get sneak attack. Sneak attack. Sneak attack. I only get sneak attack if I hit it. Oh, you... I uh, got it. Yeah. yeah. It's just oh. I'm, not, I'm not a cobbler. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Can't imagine not attacking Yeah, should I take the risk to... Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll use my bonus action to do an offhand attack. I mean... Okay. So many. Oh, it's things. another nat one. <laughs> oh, I mean, they're, you know what? They're out of the way. They're out of the way now. They're out of the way. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. You, that's how rolling works. You it was with two different dice, too. God you exercise oh. the dice. Oh. I guess uh, then that's it for your turn. Huh? That's just... <laughs> then it is my turn. I guess I'll attack you twice. <laughs> I, I really thought you had that. It Plus was... seven. It's still sad. It still has disadvantage on the first attack. Who does he attack, though? <laughs> 20 total? Does that hit? I'll cast shield again. 10? Yeah. Alright, and then, I mean, you're gonna kill it. How do you guys kill it? <laughs> All at once. It's just like, I we pretend to stab it again. at it for a little while. I'll just... And then we feel bad, and we just, we just, we just take it out. So, well, you're gonna give Dongfish another chance to try to kill it? Yeah, let's see oh, if he gets on. one. Let's see if he can hit let's it. I'll cheer Dongfish. So Dong everybody's Dong gonna Dong. ready. No. Dong fish. Dong oh no, we're, we're putting more pressure Dong on him. Fish. We're putting more pressure on Dongfish. No. Let's see if Horngus does. Yeah. 
I think a 19 will hit. Yeah, yeah. Horngus will hit it. Oh, Horngus did? What Horngus? happened to Dongfish? Okay. Dongfish rolled like shit. Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Horngus rolled max damage, which oh. he doesn't have any magical weapons. So, you know, it's not a ton. Hmm. Um, But it's going to be <laughs> 12. 79. Okay, so it's got three hit points left. Yeah. And so, we'll just, what I'll do you guys just... want to do then? Can I siphon it? I just laugh at it. For yeah. the for the HP. Yeah, the three HP, sure. Yeah. Hmm. Vampiric touch it. Turns into a pile of abyssal icor. Now you are in an odd room. There's two doors to your left, and then further on there will be another door to your left, and then down to the south there's a set of double doors, a single door. And then uh, a stairwell entrance into an octagonal room. I don't think we should leave any rooms behind us yes. uninvestigated. Uh, we'll be third okay. here. Don't want any surprises. There, there's nothing in the workshop in this room, right? We're not missing anything. If we just do a quick search. A cursory That's glance, if you would. Yeah, yeah I don't think we're coming back here. So if we want to explore it, now's the time. Where should we start? Closest door on Close, the left? Yeah. Let's yep. Just, yeah. Let's just... just work our way down. All right. So the closest door. God, I took such good notes for this. Let's see. I did a drawing of the map and I wrote notes and everything. It's amazing. Nice. Whoa. Quick free screen. We can read all the notes. We close the door again. It's like, nope, not that room. <laughs> all right. So there's a door staring you in the face. Who's got the nuts? The, just the intestinal fortitude to swing. Can we this check this door, door first, Rawl? Fine. <laughs> He's just like brushing off the wound that's like scabbed over already. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to check the door for traps. I checked the door. Mm, no traps on the door, I don't think. I silently open the door. Next just enough to peek in. It doesn't squeak at all. It's perfectly silent. A long table sits against this musty-smelling room's western wall. A blood-stained white sheet has been draped across the table over what appears to be an incredibly thin humanoid shape, perhaps a skeleton. Another table runs along the north wall, covered with neatly arranged surgical tools and a glass jar filled with green fluid. Thick layers of dust cover everything. Hmm. Hmm. I see. I think this is a room that might interest you. <laughs> I think everyone just looks at us. Like, hmm. I'll walk in then. Oh. <laughs> okay. You walk in. Yeah. So I there's do. Uh, as a body covered in a sheet, and there's uh, surgical tools and a glass jar filled with green fluid. Yep. I, I kind of. Put on the gloves. Let's do an autopsy and I whoosh, whip the sheet back. All right. It's another gloom raven. It wouldn't surprise me terribly much. It's Let's you. be honest. Yeah, it's you. It's uh -huh. to you. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's wow. not. Mm. Mm. I better learn a spell out. Hmm. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. It's something really good or really bad. Yeah. There's, there's no. In what does this yeah. do? Wait. Oh, yeah. Ma Finger mass up. healing. You have triggered a Pathfinder thing. Oh. Okay. Uh oh. No, no, no. Oh no. High level Pathfinder thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. I saw a dead body and I couldn't not. I have a question. The, this game gets, the, the 5e game gets a blue screen of death. Does, does Pathfinder <laughs> have like spells that take away your levels? Is that thing a Pathfinder? Uh -oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. All right, let's see here. Let's see, you're now level three. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. All right. <laughs> okay, so... um, you're, Okay, so when you you do that... Um, yes. Let's see. Let's see here. Let's go step by step. You've activated the Steps. soul strain. That's not uh -oh. great. That doesn't sound good. Your soul is being strained right now, so... <laughs> mm. uh, I can go on the press. 
Soul Blender. Soul, soul blender. water bath. Soul water bath. Soul. That sounds good. Yeah. Mm. It's very nice. Perfectly cooked. Soul sauna. Mm. Soul. Uh, sous vide. Right. Sous vide. So let's see here. Make a save. So please make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, at least I'm proficient in that. Okay. That makes me feel a little better. What the? <gasps> when I rolled my good, I did pretty good. 23. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I have a plus five and I rolled, I got an 18. So. so you hear a beating heart and you sense pulsing coming from the room. Hmm. And um, you pull the, the blanket back and you see uh, a skeleton missing its ribs. And you have a mm. vision. It reminds me of my sister. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you have a vision of yourself strapped to this table while oh. an intent man violently cuts the heart out of your chest. And you start to endure the excruciating pain of death. Of death. Ah. And then as you die, you catch a glimpse of paradise. Or Ooh. whatever, wherever you want to go when you die. Oh. <laughs> As your soul rises up from your body, only to be suddenly yanked backwards into a vortex of blue energy. That's where you made your save. So, wow, that would have been so bad. <laughs> that would have been so bad. Is that that's that's just tell mean. Us? Is there a spoiler that's tell us? That's just what mean? It? Oh, God. Are you able to tell us? Like, I would, I'm going to say, I'm going to whip the sheet back. You see me be like, oh. Oh, do you guys know what trap Ooh. a trap the soul don't, is? Don't no. I actually have the spell soul cage, so I do know what trap the soul does. It's not the same thing. So your soul almost got pulled away. Trapped, yeah. But since you resisted it, um, oh, geez. here's a pile of treasure. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Here, oh, console yourself with this plus one dagger. We can collect souls now. All right, you made it. You made your I save. I would have been put into a tiny gym. So you have mm. a you have a moment here, um, to, as you snap out of it, and you realize what happened, and you feel like the soul strain is still <clears throat> targeting you. Ooh! Whoa! <laughs> You're not <laughs> making this. This is what? I don't know. What? What? What do you do? Know. It's still. Good you feel like you it's high. still trying to get at you. You hear? I'm the gonna heart say. Nobody come into the room. I'm gonna. What's in there? Fast glance to see if there's anything important or if anything like clues in here. The only thing you see is that green jar it has a heart in it, and the heart is beating. All right, I want to smash the jar. This sounds like a great plan. Okay. Copious violence solves many things. It yes. does. Well, actually, actually, I'm just going to yank the jar and, gra and step out of the room, see if it's the room or the jar, because I didn't feel it until I stepped into the room. So you're taking the jar? I'm taking the jar. And I will expend... Oh, does this feel like it's it's about to... I have to make a save like every six seconds or so, or a lot? If you stay in the room, you're going to have to make another save. Okay, no, I'll take the jar and step out of the room, and then I'll cast Identify on the jar. Good lord. Hey, we don't go back in this room. This is a bad room. So that's a, that's a bad as room. He, as he comes out of the room with a jar with a beating heart in it, you I sense run away. Just palpable <laughs> evil coming from the and jar. And I just stare. I'm like, I'm just, and I'm not like way out of the room. I'm just like, you know, I just stepped across the threshold and then maybe one extra step and then I intently stare at this jar and I cast yeah. Identify. I, I hide behind Dongfish. I think Theo <laughs> just looks into Of course, you'd find something like that. So it's got palpable evil. Like, you're telling me that well, there's no doubt that we're feeling an evil radiance from the jar. Don't go yeah. into the room. Yeah. It tries to steal your soul okay. and finding out if All this right. is the cause. So Rawl's not going to run still. away, but he's going to wait a second. He has an idea, but he's going to wait. So, Essie, uh, because you're a necromancer and you know this stuff, yeah. you're pretty sure after a moment of study that if you failed your save, your body and soul would have been trapped in the heart in the jar. And the soul that's in there now would have transformed into a monster that would have attacked everybody. Ah. Oh, okay. So you have Ooh. right now a jar with a heart with a soul of some person. Cool. Some person, not a monster? 
No. Probably the victim. Right. Ooh. A trapped soul, basically. I don't know you can put that in a golem. I is is she is 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 she still suffering from the after effects of the spell or no? She's okay. She's I'm all right. All right. Rawl wants to don't step see what into happens. The room. No, no, no. He wants to see what happens if he puts the talisman of pure good up against this soul jar or the heart inside of it. I mean, as you slowly bring it close, it looks like it's it would break it and destroy the heart. I'm going to do that unless Essie tells me to stop. Do like, we I, want I'll tell to her what. Destroy it, or should we see who is trapped inside of it? Well, if we destroy it, the soul would be free to go on to where it's meant to be, would it not? Well, body and soul is trapped inside. That's what would have happened to me had I lingered, potentially. Yes. It's an artifact of evil. Perhaps we yes. should simply destroy it so that the evil for whatever purpose, cannot continue. I, I agree it should be stopped, but should we release the being trapped inside first? They may not I, be evil. I know nothing of the esoteric nature of it, but mm -hmm. I just know that I would not want it to continue, and if I were trapped in it, I would not want it to suffer for eternity. This Pretty creature sure. is... This person's a victim. And he gestures to the a tarp that you unfurled. Yes. Missing the rib cage too. Interesting. Do I feel like if I opened the jar, the soul it's trapped in would get out? Mm. Or does it have to be replaced? Mm. You know that breaking the jar might uh, shut the whole thing down. Okay. I'm going to put it here on the floor, back up a little bit, and just, just boop it with your talisman, Raul. All right. Stand behind. I'll stand skeletons. behind. Horgus. Well, for, first, what Raw will do is he will, he will first strike the the jar itself with his um the butt of his sword handle, mm -hmm. and so that the heart is exposed. And then, if necessary, he'll touch the heart inside with the talisman to appear good. Okay, so you um you shatter the glass and then you touch the heart with your talisman. And the mm -hmm. heart just kind of turns to ash, and um, a spirit made of energy emerges of some dude who uh, howls and then looks at you and nods and then fades away. I could be really mean and 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 soul cage it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> no, nope, back into another box. Okay. Well, <laughs> we could talk with it if it's in the soul. It would. But we you could, could also. We could, Communicate with it in the soul cage. We can ask questions and stuff, and, and then you could <laughs> eat it. Fair. So, but I won't do eat it. it. <laughs> it's probably insane or, or suffered enough. So. I'm yeah, I thought it was. I'll I'll resist the urge. My soul is almost in there, so. Meh. You know, in the adventure, I mean, this Pathfinder adventure, it's a few levels higher than you guys. The DC mm -hmm. was a twenty-two. That's I mean, not great. I, you know, to scale it for five E, uh -huh. you know, the DC's a little lower. But I mean, you rolled a 23, so you legit beat it no matter what the DC Whew. was. So. Oh, boy. But they, Thank you. it's like a thing. Wow. Mm. And there's this whole thing about how you have a scar on your soul after that. Ooh. Cool. Yeah. Oh. That would have been, been fun, but, you know, <laughs> glad we avoided it. <laughs> Good to know. Right. Yeah. Next innocuous, seemingly innocuous <laughs> one. Yeah, room. that's horrible room. <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. Sure there's room. nothing. I'm pretty sure something awful. And as you like destroyed, I'm like, that's good. <laughs> destroyed it. I watched myself die. It was fascinating. Let's go to the next room. <laughs> yes, we've seen a lot. <laughs> oh my god, I'm already checking the next door for traps. I'm trying to distract <laughs> myself. Like, the checks will not save you. <laughs> okay, no traps on the next door. I'm not walking into this one. I mean, yeah, the, these are the ones the ones that aren't trapped. Oh. You have to watch out for because the room is bad. But the room. I attempt Unless to silently dead open the body door under again. a sheet. I'm uh, I'm out of it. I'm out. Oh, yeah. No. No more dead bodies or sheets, please. <laughs> so you don't think the door is trapped? Okay, I open it quietly. I peek in. A solitary table stands in the center of this room, and a dusty, almost rotted, overstuffed sofa sits against the northern wall. Two bookcases rest against the east and west walls, 
their volumes musty from age. Several slate boards covered with complex diagrams and notes scribed in chalk, some of which have been wiped away, hang from the walls. <laughs> well, nothing in here. <laughs> diagrams and books. Okay. Oh, I'll go in it and do a quick search of the room. Okay. I'm gonna so, put my uh, toe into the other room that we killed the heart of just to see if I No. No, why, <laughs> why like, would where, you where, do that? Where'd Essie go? <laughs> <laughs> soul strain yourself <laughs> uh. um so there's diagrams on a chalkboard uh depicting a complicated series of notes written in a combination of abyssal and draconic oh boy mm, i don't yeah. read either of those don't know any of that uh, do i do do i know comprehend languages that would be something nifty i should learn i do not know that spell Uh, there's also Who takes utility spells anyways. <laughs> books, I have so many certainly not Fio. spells. Books on the shelves bear titles. Uh, topics uh, include anatomy, the nature of death, and theories on the soul. This collection of books, you're gonna be surprised, is worth two thousand five hundred gold. What? Cool. It weighs two hundred pounds altogether. Uh, hey, we got some handy haversacks yeah. and yeah. Horngus and yeah, Horngus. I almost said Horngus and Dingus. Horngus and Dongfish. <laughs> Maybe Dongfish can be like you know useful. Yeah. Don't, don't oh, give that's, any more that's ideas for really, names. That was no. really mean. Oh, no. yeah. Also, you can make a uh, perception check. Um, ashes. Eight. <laughs> that's all that's in that room. Yeah, right, perfect. Yep. Okay, Sounds move along, good. everybody. Right. We don't need these books. I feel like Essie could just live down here. <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, I have the teleportation circle numbers now, so I, I mean, I mean, oh. I mean, you could, yeah, you can make this a distant, like you know, vacation home with vacation the home. With Once the we find sucking. out where it is, maybe. Yeah. Okay, and then you come down into the lower section of the room and there is mm -hmm. another door. I will take the books. I'll take the books. Come on, dongfish. There you the go. see in the other room taking the books. I mean... Alright, check this door out. It's not a secret. Uh, I don't think the door... Make a perception. Their perception. Mm. It's one to one. Hmm. All right, I think. Oh, I forgot. If I roll lower than a ten on my proficient yeah. skills, now I rolled a ten. Are you but... proficient yeah. in perception? I am. So yeah. you may have seen. Actually, something. it would have been a sixteen in the last room, but I still don't know that I want to see anything, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you hear muttering, almost like prayers in some abyssal language. That is abyssal with a capital A. I hear demonic muttering, everybody. Mm. Um, Fantastic. Mm. Time mm. to stop it, I guess. I have to shovel. Raw. All right. Raw. Dongfish, you stand back there with the books. <laughs> All right, E5. Let's see what you got. You're telling Dongfish to guard the books. Uh, he needs he's... to redeem himself. <laughs> no, he had. He had. Two chances. No, Maybe a it. third. He needs one more. Give the guy one more chance. <laughs> Maybe someone, that something will come for the books. Also, he's not doing great on HP, so I'm saving. Oh, God. Dongfish only has 12 HP, so, you know. Right. Rawl's full up, so he should go in first. Tank the damage. Okay. So, Rawl, you open the door? I do. A raised platform lines the northern wall of this irregularly shaped five-sided room. A statue of a man with avian talons for feet, the head of a stork, fans of mm -hmm. knives and scalpels in his hands, stares balefully into the room, looming above a pair of prayer desks. The walls are adorned with disturbing paintings of men and women being tortured by red-skinned demons before a nightmarish cliffside house that seems disproportionately large compared to the landscape around it. So in this room, there are two red-skinned individuals praying. They're deep in prayer, each kneeling before a desk. Okay. And they don't react to my entering the room? Uh, I suppose they are snapping out of their trance now. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Well, we I will uh, endeavor to snap their heads from their body. <laughs> they are useless minions, so you can just say how they are. <laughs> oh, no. All right. Oh. Quick. <laughs> Dong, get in there. <laughs> get, get the oh, oh, no, this was the chance. <laughs> and he's back with the book. That's fine. All right. Oh. The useless minions get kicked I mean, to the curb. Oh. He doesn't need to know. So you, you just kill, we... you're gonna kill them both, Roll? I try to oh, yell, yeah. wait, wait for Dongfish, but it's too no, late. No mercy for for old demons. Yeah. Swift. So you <laughs> chop their heads off, and they turn into a Vistal <laughs> I-Core. And yeah, there's just this statue of this weird entity and murals of uh, demons. Can, can and I figure out who the entity is? Like a religion, I guess? Or... Oh, boy. Ah. Is it Paizuzu or something? Paizuzu. Paizuzu. Oh, is religion intelligence? Is it pie? <laughs> it is. Mm. That's a 22. Okay. You yeah, know that this is a shrine to Shax, a demon lord of envy, murders, and lies. Oh, I'm all too familiar with this. This is a shrine to Shax. And actually, once you're in here, um, when you speak, no words come out. Apparently, this whole room oh. affects you with a silence spell, although it did not affect the demons who were praying to it. Interesting. I try speaking in Infernal. <sighs> Nothing happened. Okay. I was saying maybe it was language silence. All right. <laughs> um, is there okay. is there anything like hidden uh, beneath the statue or in the statue's hand or behind the statue? The only thing you notice is that um, you're supposed to kneel on these boards, and when you do so, Small barbs jab into your knees, oh. dealing one point oh. of piercing damage to honor Shax, the oh, Pathfinder no. Demon Lord of Envy, Murders, and Lies. Oh, deface this statue. Just... Yep. You pair... Stick a mustache on you it. You can't help it when you look at the head of the stork. You do remember in the Feywild seeing a stork flying, carrying a baby at one point. Okie dokie. One has well, nothing to I'm... do with the other. It's just <laughs> no. Uh, the <laughs> ominous gonna... carrying a of a baby. All that sword <laughs> baby yeah. Yeah. Did we just help <laughs> yeah. a demon baby out of the fey? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> I mean, mistakes were made. All right, mm -hmm. <laughs> we move on. I thought all the storks were good. <laughs> fey, come on. Storks are evil. <laughs> um. Uh, uh, Rawl is cool with leaving this behind. I mean, if he had a lighter and gasoline, he would mm. burn this place down. But I mean, I have. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't have a fire spell. It's fine. The sand. Ooh, I'll take we'll flash the... flood out and I'll aim at its face. Oh boy! Everybody take for cover. Everyone I, I feels just ducks. The, I, I the maid cleaning the crew room. come in here later. I think Theo every time like. Ash just takes out the gun, just hits the deck. <laughs> just... I just, oh, I the gun. The I shoot. I forgot about the gun. That's, oh. that's radiant damage too, isn't it? 24 radiant. Yeah, 24 oh, hit yeah. with radiant damage. You shoot the squirt, 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 squirt. I shoot that. the stork in the face. Oh, all right. Sideways. <laughs> you damage it a bit. <laughs> poor Shax. Nice. Are you poor? All right. Oop, don't look at the net. <laughs> <laughs> Might be Ignore easy. the man behind the curtain. All Literally. right, you gonna go to the next door? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. we are. You listen mm -hmm. at it. You listen at the door. Yes. Well, why? Of course. <laughs> Who is listening? Me. I'll die. Uh huh. Ashes. You don't hear... want this per zero perception listening at the door. You hear mm -hmm. the sounds of bubbling and burbling. Cool. <laughs> and boop, 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 those kind of noises. Mm. And like, this might be our alchemical workshop, y'all. Oh. oh, good stuff. Let's go in. Okay. I silently open the door and I peek in. Soul right. siphon. Move the page here. <laughs> Make a wisdom save. <laughs> no. Heisenberg. Sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> it's like oh. a. Soul drugs so, made out of souls. Mm. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. So, several oil. You open the door, right? Mm hmm. 
Several oily, iridescent stains mar this room's stone floor. And an acrid, metallic... T- Wait a second, I almost forgot. No. Uh-oh. <laughs> the deadly <don't>... trap. <laughs> the Wait, the trap! The worst part. <laughs> the floor gives way. <laughs> you tumble into darkness. Just... Yeah. Soulception. Tumble through seven layers of souls. Uh, <laughs> let's go back in time for a minute. Oh, okay. Uh, never mind, I'll... I'll do it. I'll, oh. I'll cheat. Later. I'm concerned. Yes, this, Wait, this... you'll cheat instead. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's going no, on? No, nothing. Never mind. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with this room. It's just. There's bubbly. nothing wrong with this room at all. No, just no. open the door. <laughs> Turns out there is a greater demon already here. A in pair, E2. <laughs> a pair of work tables, each covered with alchemical equipment, sits to the south, while shelves of tinctures and powders. And strange alchemical supplies line the walls to the east and west. Brightly glowing crystals mounted on the ceiling fill this chamber with light. There is a creature in here. It is red skinned. It has horns. One horn is broken. It's wearing a big blue coat with lots of pockets. And it's got like vials strapped to it. And a jar of eyeballs. And cool. A whole bunch of what? cutting implements hanging from chains. Like nice. a a regular knife and a stiletto and a curved knife for pricking. Hey. I pull uh, out flash flood and I say freeze. <laughs> What's I your name? Nice Tell us your name and your backstory right now. <laughs> okay. Um, and while he's distracted, I cut its head off. <laughs> oh, no. He says, oh, wait. Well, well, well. What have we here? My name is Nairuchni. I'm already gonna kill it. Gesundheit. <laughs> You're in way over your heads, Silver Ravens. Oh, you know who we are. Yes, the master has taken an interest in you. Oh. I always like to know who our fans are. Who, who is your master? Oh, ho, ho, ho. he is not a fan. No, no. He is here to teach you a lesson. Oh. Okay, uh, and uh, you require. What is it, what, what is it that you do? I am his assistant. You know, he is very into um, dissection and and such. Uh, yes. I was the fine. We could almost be friends if he wasn't trying to murder my family. Oh, he has oh. taken a special interest in you, Essie. Yes. Oh. Lord hmm. Mayor, excuse me. I mean, after all. Um, you have a special relationship with a fan of the Temple Hill Slasher, Varl Vex. What about my husband? Well, Varl was emulating the Temple Hill Slasher, and Shax, the great demon lord of murder, couldn't help but take notice. Now, let me explain something to you. You see, the original Temple Hill Slasher was a man who died... But guess what? He became a demon who serves Shax, and now he has returned in demon form. The original Temple Hill Slasher is now a demon. So we're fighting Professor Mangafoon, Demon Esquire? Yes, that's right. That's that's his master. He said it's... he wasn't going to tell us, but he just did. So you should expect um, my master to kill you off one by one. In typical Temple Hill slasher style, uh, Essie he'll probably save you for last. I see. Oh. Well, isn't that comforting? Is it in your power right. to summon him right now and just get? This Are you going? done? <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Rawls, like like eyeing his blade, looking at his like non-existent watch. You know, just like I mean, looking back at his friends and like kind of like. Eh? Eh? I, I did ask for his name and his backstory. I think we got it all. He says, "Okay, summon him. He's been watching you the entire time you've been here." <laughs> Can you get him Do to? Do you think he's going to save you? Um, save me. It's, I'm not. You seem to be under the impression that, that you're in some kind of safety here. Oh yes, of course. I mean, it's Mangboon. You're all. Seen- you're all right. Um, let me try to explain this to you in another way. And I'm like walking up, and I'm going to try to literally gut him with my sword. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I'm. I tire of 
just, I just trading <laughs> trading grip my shovel with demons. All right, so you, you plunge your sword into his stomach. <laughs> Literally, many times, stabby, stabby, stabby. <laughs> Howls in pain and turns into a pile of demon icor. All but right, let's save his lab. All of his treasure <laughs> remains. <laughs> Cool, like a pinata, like a demonic. Like a demon. oh, it just spills out of him. You stab Every him, stab, you stab him, more. and like magic weapons fall on. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> bling, bling, bling. Right. So he's got supplies worth a total of six thousand two hundred gold. Oh my God. All right, they'll go with the books, I guess. Yep. Somebody else write it down. <laughs> with Dong the books, fi- dongfish, you're needed. Dongfish. Yep. There's I mean, one, one dose of Dust of Illusion. Cool. There's uh, an Elixir of Fire Breath. Oh, that sounds pretty sweet. There's two Elixirs of Truth. Ah. Uh. There's three potions of greater healing. Cool. One for everybody. There's a potion of Tongues, which lets you understand languages. Yeah. Cool. Does the potion of truth compel truth? Is it like? It's probably like a zone of truth, mm-hmm. but like with an automatic save, probably or because or automatic fail because you drank it, you know. Mm. Oh, that's what I'd imagine it. Just... So who who are we divvying up the potions of greater healing to? Y'all can have it. I... Okay, I'll take. Yeah, I'll take one. A jar of restorative ointment. That stuff's good. That's Kigatun's ointment. Okay. Um. Then there's uh, Nairukni's formula book, which contains recipes to make all of these potions. Ooh, nice. I'll take that. Nice. Then he's got notes on something called the Soul Anchor. Oh, oh I boy. wonder. Oh. And I'll flip through those. Um, all right. So Barzillai Thrun was messing with something called the Soul Anchor. Yes. And Mangvoon had actually used the Soul Anchor long ago. Apparently, it's Ooh. underneath the city of Kintargo. Oh. And we just had to dig. Who knew? Mangvoon was able to use it. Because what Mangvoon found out was that a lot of times when you die, you don't retain your memories. You become a planar being that doesn't remember its mortal life. And he hated mm-hmm. that. So he used the Soul Anchor to make sure that he would retain his memories. And that's why Mangvoon, the serial killer... You know, joined up with Shax, and now he's he's back. Um, no, all right, and they couldn't figure out what Barzlai was doing with the Soul Anchor, and uh, yeah, that's about it. All right. Ooh, good to know. <laughs> uh, there's a door in here also. Oh. Nice. I guess we should check that out. Cool, look at that. Ominous okay. I look at the door. Thing. Make check a door. perception. I listen at it. Make a perception. 25. It's fine. Is it? I insight check the DM. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's freaking fine. <laughs> I sat up the door. The GM cheats and. <laughs> Yeah. The GM doesn't have a stat block, so it cannot be beat. <laughs> you gonna check out that room? It's a little room. <laughs> little room. So a large fire. cauldron hangs over a stone basin at the eastern end of this room. Work tables stained with blood and covered with stained rags and butcher's tools lie in the north and south walls. Underneath the tables are several crates. The heavy scent of chemicals and wax is almost overpowering. Oof. A single, no, it's a, so it's a workshop where they made things like this is where they made the exploding corpse trap, mm-hmm. where they encased a body in wax. The cauldron is partially empty and contains hardened wax and traces of blood. The crates contain wax and trap making supplies. There's notes on trap design here. Cool. Ooh. We should take those. Yeah. Can't trap our hideouts. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, I was thinking about that. <laughs> so yeah. maybe that sewer. Is there yeah. anything else you want to do in these the alchemy room or this cauldron room? Uh, um, 
Think we took the supplies. Took all the good stuff from the uh, alchemist there. Pinata. Yeah. And do we have enough stuff to make anything explosive? Ooh. Yeah. Can we or, just make yeah. something explosive now? You could try, yeah. I mean, I'll give it a it, go. Do it. Yep, do I'm it. real smart. <laughs> Are any of you trained in alchemy? No. No. I'm trained Roll, in mortician Morticianeresque-ness. <laughs> All right. Wait, what would Sounds be... Fun. Is, is alchemy a thing? Oh, it it's is. It's like a tool or something. Yeah, yeah. It's a tool proficiency. Oh. I'm proficient in dragon chess. <laughs> nice. We should play a game sometime. We should. That'd be great. That that noble background. Oh right, yeah, we, we're uh, just about <laughs> out of that time. Tennis. So let's. I think we should stop there so I can look oh. up how to make explosives. And okay. Figure out how much well, damage you take when you fail. I'm, I'm good oh, at deck no. saves, so I'll be involved to try to help out. Okay. <laughs> be like, the two is... people with headbands of intellect will put their brains you, together. You get oh. it to the point where it, you there's like a one last like mix one last or something, pour, and then and I'll then do I'll... that. <laughs> I can maybe give and one of the inspiration. inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now we know where it is. We went through the ceiling. Okay. Demon. Oh, no. The storm, All bro. the demons. All right. So, one would you plugs for wrap it up? Theo, you got any plugs? Yeah, um, yeah, for um, all my regular games are a little bit on break, but um, on Sunday, it's uh, The Phase on Pro Starters channel. And Sunday morning on Little Red Dash channel, I'm going to play uh, 10 a.m. I'm going to play uh, For the Queen. And on Monday on Foul Black Cats is part two of a two, two, second part of a two part uh, alien game where I look forward to getting killed in space. Nice. It should be fun. That sounds cool. And I'm I'm playing a bu bureaucrat, so. Oh, did you get? Uh... Yeah, expect lots lots of forms, lots of regulations. <laughs> the worst horror. There. We go. Get the alien to fill out the forms. Mm hmm in triple kit. Lindy, you got any plugs? Uh, yes. So most of my stuff's been on break for the past several weeks, but I actually have shit coming up this week. So tomorrow, you should check out uh, Tales from the Grim because we have been off for a year, and we are having our Project Athena Pulp Cthulhu Christmas special. It's been a year in the making. We're very excited. Um, and then on Monday, you can see me with Shana on the Aliens game. And then um, Mondays in Exandria on my channel. Also tomorrow, though, I almost forgot, uh, Tales from a Hollow World, I believe, is getting a new episode, at least on the Patreon, so you should check it out. Shauna did the art. It's really awesome. And then Tuesdays, we're having our regular Call of Cthulhu Christmas special on Encounter Roleplay. I have no idea what that entails. I'm a little terrified. Um, Mr. Raven left. Wednesday, we're having our epilogue for my Black Roses Bloom which is just wrapped up a couple weeks ago. Cool. Yeah, so we're doing awesome. an epilogue. It's going to be real fun. I think that's at 11 p.m. Eastern. And then Thursday, we're having an Unhallowed Metropolis Christmas special. And then Saturday, I think we're having a different Unhallowed Metropolis. I like that game. It's a fun episode. That'll be fun. Wow. So yeah, actually, it's stuff this week. It makes me so happy. Wow. All right. Uh, Garrett, got any uh, stuff? Hey. For me. Hey, I think Mariah Carey said it best when she said, I don't need a lot for Christmas. Oh, God. There's just one thing I need. Rolling dice with my bud. Power <laughs> score RPG. Uh-huh. Okay. And then words of wisdom from Ryan. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can top that. <laughs> just, I'll, I'll just go for a good old-fashioned happy holidays and you know, good winter solstice to all of you. Um, uh, I I uh, am finishing up. I've been uh, unable to play a lot of things more recently, but my schedule is going to free up for the holidays. So I'm looking to um, join in on maybe some one shots because of time zone issues. I normally can't join in with all the lovely things that people do at uh, normal times um, on weekdays, but now I will try to be looking at other people's stuff and, uh, yeah, if anybody out there has one shots, I would love to hop in in the near future. Um, other than that, you know, have have a good time. Keep rolling. All right, and uh, I'll be back tomorrow on this channel. We'll be doing Dungeon Academy groups in Avernus. We're gonna. I got this whole wacky thing cooked up, so I'll do that tomorrow. Thanks everybody for watching. We will see you again next time. Goodbye. <laughs>